The Russian author Andrei Sinyaski once said, there's something mystical about vodka, an attempt to tear the soul out of its earthly equilibrium and put it into a blissful, immortal state. In the following, we'll move past this mysticism and learn how vodka is made. The basic ingredients needed to make vodka are grain, potatoes, or molasses derived from sugarcane. The second important ingredient is water. Which raw ingredients are ultimately used to distill vodka depends on their availability, local tradition, and the preferences of the individual distilleries. Russian and Polish vodka is usually made from rye, rarely from potatoes. Rye is considered the best raw ingredient. In other parts of the world, however, vodka is also made from wheat or barley. Potatoes were considered by many to be an inferior base ingredient for making vodka. However, the improvement to the distillation processes increased the quality, and potato vodka has become increasingly popular. Molasses is a byproduct of sugar production and the cheapest base ingredient compared to the other base ingredients. More recently, vodka has also been made from grapes, corn, rice, and soy. These spirits may only call themselves vodka if they are produced according to the traditional method of vodka production. Water is crucial to vodka production, and 60% of vodka is water. The water is needed for the production process and for blending the vodka to drinking strength. To ensure that the distillation process of vodka produces a pure, neutral distillate that is free of foreign substances, the quality of the water is crucial. Many vodka producers therefore use extra soft water from their own wells or springs. For some time now, water has also been extracted from icebergs off Newfoundland's coast for vodka production. Hardly any water is as pure as that of icebergs. The glacier from which it comes consists of pure precipitation water that fell and then froze thousands of years ago in the Arctic Circle. The first steps in making vodka are very similar to those of brewing beer. First, the raw ingredients for the vodka, no matter what kind, must be mixed with water and heated. This completely converts the starch it contains into sugar. In the case of raw ingredients containing starch, for example, potatoes, enzymes must also be added to convert the starch into sugar. Malt is often added as well. The result is a thick Swedish liquid. The hot liquid is drained off and cooled down to the pitching temperature in the plate heat exchanger, as yeast can only ferment at quite low temperatures. The solid residues, also known as spent grains, remain. This mash is then transferred to fermentation tanks with the addition of yeast at a temperature between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius, where it is fermented for about three days. During fermentation, the yeast converts the sugar into alcohol and carbon dioxide. The resulting liquid has an alcohol content of 6 to 10 percent by volume and can now be distilled. There are many different distilleries, although column or continuous distilleries are better suited to the production of vodka. For the production of Scotch whiskey, on the other hand, mainly pot stills are used. In the distillery shown here, the mash is first pumped into a copper still where it is heated from below with steam. Since alcohol evaporates faster than water, the alcohol vapors rise upwards in the neck of the still. They are led via the line arm into the column still. The column consists of a long copper or stainless steel tube with a series of trays. The alcohol vapor arrives at the bottom of the column and rises to the first tray. Due to the bubble caps located at the bottom, the alcohol vapor cools down and is liquefied again. The vapor now continues to rise from bottom to bottom. Due to the simple geometry, each plate is slightly cooler than the one below. This rapid transformation of vapor to liquid to vapor takes place over and over again. In this way, the alcohol is enriched and the vapor becomes more and more high proof as it rises. This reaction separates increasingly heavier compounds such as fusel alcohols from the lighter compounds such as ethanol as the vapor travels up the column. This increases the purity of the spirit. 
If sufficient bottoms are available, distillation in the column can produce a spirit with over 96% ethanol. At the top of the column, the alcohol vapor reaches the defligmator, a vessel filled with cooling water, which condenses the vapor once again, thus increasing the alcohol content once more. The alcoholic vapor then enters the condenser. Here it flows through a spiral. Outside the spiral, cold water is passed through the condenser. The vapors are thus cooled down and liquefied again. The resulting raw spirit is now distilled a second time to further increase the alcohol content. During this distillation process, the master distiller separates the resulting fine distillate into the foreshot, the middle cut or heart, and the feints. The foreshot contains residues from the previous burning process, as well as volatile toxic methanol. The middle cut or heart is collected and goes to the next step, the filtration. In the feints, fusel alcohols are extracted as they have a negative effect on the taste and can even be harmful. In the case of vodka, where the aromas must be almost completely removed, a high degree of separation is required. Therefore, vodka can be distilled up to eight times by some producers. Column stills for vodka production can consist of 40 trays in a single column or four to five interconnected columns, all designed to purify the spirit to an ever-increasing degree. The final step before bottling is filtration. Here, the last unwanted aromatic substances, as well as fusel alcohols, are removed from the distillate. After all, vodka should taste as pure and clear as possible. In the past, the vodka was simply placed in the cold, foreign substances settled to the bottom, and the purified liquid was then skimmed off. Later, ceramic shards, sand and felt were used for filtering. Today, filtering is done with charcoal or activated carbon, but also through precious metals such as platinum and gold. Depending on the preference, Individual distilleries also filter through other materials. The filter system shown here consists of two stainless steel columns filled with activated carbon that are connected together. The vodka is pumped through the filters from the bottom to the top. This method achieves a very high degree of purity. The finest remaining suspended matter is finally removed in a final filtering process using a layer filter. In this process, the vodka is pressed sideways through a tube into the individual closely fitting cellulose layers. The filtered liquid flows out of the other side. The quality of the filtering process is crucial for the remaining taste of the final product and thus its price. Aging after distillation is not required. Storage until bottling takes place in glass, stone, or stainless steel tanks. In a final step, the vodka is blended with water to drinking strength. This is usually 37.5 or 40% alcohol by volume. Traditionally, vodka has had 40% alcohol by volume, which was introduced by the Russian government in 1843. Modern brands, however, vary between 37.5% and 56% alcohol by volume. In addition to pure or neat vodkas, Flavored vodkas are now produced by mixing the distillate or pure vodka with fruits, spices, extracts, or essences, or adding flavoring oils. I hope you're able to better understand the vodka production process with the help of this animation. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and if you have any suggestions or remarks, feel free to write them in the comments below. Cheers!